Hey, Lab Code Agents, how is everyone doing today? We have a really great, um, a really great webinar. I'm Nick Baldwin. Uh, Tristan Almada is here, but he's at a broker open house. So if you hey, see a Lab blank, Code Agents, how is everyone oh, doing today? We is have that your, is that your computer? Great, um, a really great oh. webinar. I'm Nick Baldwin. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. There was some feedback. Um, okay, it's not a show without a little bit of technical difficulties, right? Okay, so uh, we have a great webinar for you today. Tristan Almada is going to jump in and out. He's at a broker open house uh, at a $6 million listing. You know, what can you do? Um, but today I have Dale Archdecken on, on the webinar with us. And Dale is uh, Dale's with Noah Ostroff and Associates at Keller Williams in Philadelphia. Correct, Dale? Yes. You're like in the Philly area? Okay, and Dale yeah. is a lead gen and director of marketing for... Uh, the the living the the living the Jersey living in Philadelphia Philly living right Dale um, yeah six, I'll give you the whole rundown yeah let's do the whole thing there's six expansion teams you do all the lead gen all the marketing I mean you have people that do it but you're the one that sets it up and trains the ISAs and uh, gets them to be yeah. really great and lead gen and convert at a high level right so let's talk about um, and I probably stumbled over that a little bit because I usually stink at intros. So tell us a little bit about you and what you do and where you work and what you do with ISAs and how you get them to just completely crush it on the phone. Well, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so I'm the director of lead generation and now we're branded under as global living companies, right? So we have all these different brands. We have Philly living, Jersey living, Ohio living, Miami living, we have Orlando. Uh, at this point, at last count, we have one, two, three, four, five. I had to write this down. We have five. So we have four different states that we're in, multiple four offices, states. four states, multiple offices, and the U.K. Which <coughs> oh, you're, oh, that's right. You were telling me about the U.K. office that we were talking yeah. a few weeks ago. Yeah, when I first met you, I asked you if you knew how to lead generate in the U.K. because I did. Yeah, I, I probably should learn. That sounds like an interesting challenge. Have you yeah, figured it, it out? Have you guys figured it out yet? Yeah, so interestingly enough, they do have some of their own websites similar to Zillow and Trulia there, uh, yeah. but things work a little bit different. They have Right Move. Okay. And it's kind of like Realtor.com or something. Zubla. It's a little. Um, bit like, a, like a Zillow? Yeah, exactly. So, so we. They drop leaflets off at people's houses. They actually make money by doing uh, CMAs for people. That's really their hook. Oh, oh, I got you. So they're actually giving people full market analysis on their on their homes. Then, yeah, that's the way that they get people to come into them because uh, you know the con average consumer can't just go online and figure out the value of their house or the close, you know, within a hundred thousand dollars of the value of their house anyway, it's similar to so what they here can. We are over here getting irritated that Zillow is giving everyone Zestimates, whereas in the UK, these sites are actually doing CMAs for them. Yeah. Well, not the sites, the individual agents. So on the Zoopla or on the right move, uh, you would advertise yourself as an agent and you would say, I'm doing uh, home estimates for people. Right? Oh, I gotcha. Okay. So people would choose you from a list on that website to do an estimate for them. Interesting, interesting. Okay. So that's how you guys are doing some lead gen there. All right. So listen, yeah. I want to get right into it because everyone, uh, I think that hiring and training ISAs is a big challenge for a lot of people. I know it's a challenge for my team still. And um, I think it's, I'm sorry? It is, right? It's a challenge for me too. Yeah. Yeah, it's a challenge for you too. So we're going to go through a really in-depth PowerPoint presentation on how Dale hires and trains his ISAs for his different expansion teams. Um, if there's anything else you want to add, go for it, or else we can just jump right into it. Yeah, no, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go through the whole thing. I'm going to go through the class that I teach at uh, Keller Williams uh, offices okay. that I offer to do. And then at the end of that, I have a special uh, offer for your for your lab coat community here, uh, with a nice uh, thing that I put together that really encapsulates my recruiting process and streamlines it for everybody. It's it's what I, it's how I do it, and, and I offer all the tips and techniques and tools to do that. Okay, let's let's just j dive right into it. Sounds good. Let me turn on. Yeah, so we're shared. Hey, there's me again. And you. There's you again. Let me know if this looks right for you. It looks perfect. Okay, great. So, 
Jump right in here. Right. So what we're talking about today is we're talking about recruiting and hiring, training, coaching, and accountability for an inside sales agent or an inside sales department. It doesn't matter. But this all holds true whether you have one or you have ten. So I already went over who I am. Uh, my staff, right now I have four full-time ISAs and I have two marketing staff members. And actually, it's the advertising piece. We have an entirely different marketing department. I handle the lead generation and the advertising that all goes into the inside sales department. I personally have about 10 years of telemarketing experience starting when I was in high school selling credit card insurance. Um, and so we all know the real estate roller coaster, right? We have big spurts of lead generation. Then we get into deal administration. And then all of a sudden your closings go to closing. And now what? Now what do you do? Now you got to ramp it back up again. Um, I think half of the lab code agents posts from agents on there have to do with this roller coaster. So why an ISA, right? An ISA is there to help you take that roller coaster out. It's to ensure consistent lead generation, ensure consistent database nurturing, increase your repeat and referral business because now while you're out there showing houses while you're on listing appointments, And it also means that you have more. The system and regular. I'm going to say that again. Regular coaching and training. ISAs are not. You don't just send them to a. room with a phone failure and, and I'm talking about hey Dale do you have a, a hard wire connection you can uh, jump on? I key fact I failed at running on inside sales successful and had and had struggle with it. and it really, really comes down to the screening and hiring Production accountability, regular accountability for your salespeople, and the volume of leads that you're providing to them. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Dale, do you, do you have a... I'm losing your sound, Nick. Yeah, do you have a, a hardwired connection you can jump on? Um, no, I do not. Oh, you know what? I think it's better now. Okay. Let's go ahead. Did you catch all that from success and failure? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, you want me to hit run over that again? Yeah, let's go back a little bit. So to this slide or another one? Go back one more. Tools. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so tools, scripts, leads, a lead management system, a dialer, and regular coaching and training. And what I was saying is that you can't just send an ISA into a room with a phone book and say, let me know when you get something. It's, you got to have regular coaching and training and accountability. Um, you got to be connected with them. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. So I was talking about the success and failure. You know, I've, I've failed at running inside sales departments before or managing an inside sales agent before. I know other people who've had trouble doing it. Um, and I know also what you have to do in order to be successful at it. And it comes down to these five key factors, which are screening and hiring, detailed training, regular coaching, production accountability, and the volume of leads that you're providing to them. So if you can master these five things, then you're definitely going to be on the right path to having a successful and profitable inside sales agent. We good? Yeah, no, that's great. We heard it all. All right, great. So here's my hiring process. I'm just going to run you, you through it. So I run ads on Indeed, ZipRecruiter, Craigslist, all the hiring websites out there. You know, it really depends on how much you want to spend. I also, you know, talk to everybody in my office, talk to admins, um, put it out there to my social media. So 
you know, just get it out there everywhere because you need a lot of you need a lot of people. You need a lot of resumes. You need a lot of applicants for this job. It's not an easy job to hire for. So and and because you have to screen a lot of these things, I've automated a lot of my processes. So I have a first email that goes out to every applicant that comes in, inviting them to call a phone number, which goes to a voice mailbox, right? Yeah. That asks them a simple question like, please tell me what sales experience you have that you believe is going to make you the best fit for this inside sales department. It's just a, you know, it's a cloud voicemail box. So they record their message and it sends it to me in my inbox and I get to listen to it. So it's basically a verbal application. I don't have to waste my time looking at somebody's yeah. resume. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if they can't speak our language. Right? I think that's a great idea. Um, or if they're not articulate. Um, also, when they call you, the people who have phone experience are going to tell you they have phone experience. People who don't have phone experience are going to say, um, I'm great. That's why you should hire me. Uh, then we sele I select the best recordings from that, and I send them another templated email that invites them to a 30-minute role play with me over the phone. And again, in all these emails, uh, or in this second email, it has a, a link that goes to my calendar for a scheduling. It's a, a scheduling app, which I, I share with you guys later. Um, so they can pick their time on my calendar. I don't have to do a lot of back and forth, right? So they just book their time. Then I get on the phone with them, and this call with them, the very first thing that I do, ask them what questions they have about the role, answer any questions that they have, and then I'm really specific with them about what the pay structure is in case that dissuades them from being in this role. Because it's going to be, you know, for us, we do a low base pay, and we bonus on closings. So I make sure that that low base pay is something they can support. Because when I'm running my ads, and this is a, a, a suggestion that I have for everybody, when you're advertising your inside sales position, if you have a low base pay, don't advertise your low base pay. What you do is you take your base and you add to it you know, as much as they could make if they're hitting their numbers, and that is the number that you advertise. Otherwise, if you're advertising a really low base pay, you're really not going to get very skilled people. Um, so because of that, when you have that first conversation, make sure that you're really clear about the, the compensation. Also in the ad. I love, yeah, the, also, I love that ahead. point, and I love, the, I love the voicemail application. Oh, it's huge, man. I'm telling you, like, it saves me so much time. Um, very great points there. Yeah, and uh, so then from that role play, what I have, I have some uh, customized scripts that I use in my role play with them, and I'm I'm testing them for skills. And I want to know: Are you going to stay on the phone with me? Are you going to ask for? Are you going to try and close me more than once? Are you, you know? Oh, I forgot to mention when I get, when I start before I start the role play, two things I tell them is: Your goal is to set an appointment with me. And the only way that you fail this exercise is if you let me off the phone before you ask all your questions. Say that to every single person. So and can you repeat that again? Yeah, so I say, your goal is to set an appointment with me, and the only way you fail this exercise is if you let me off the phone before you ask all your questions. I love that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, and so what that does is, believe it or not, there are people that will still let you off the phone because they don't want to be rude. So I'm sorry, but you're probably not going to be able to set appointments for me if I gave you specific instructions not to let me off the phone and you did it anyway. So that's one, one little test there for skill. And then the other one is we're looking to see if they're going to stay on the phone. Will they keep closing me? You know, can they deal with the reflex? No, with the ref. You know, I, I have to go. I'm going to work right now. Yeah. Uh, will they stay yeah. on there? Are they aggressive enough to do that? So those are the really specific things that we're looking for in the role play. And you can hear whether somebody has it or not, right? Sure, and if they sure, don't, sure. if they don't have it, I just tell them, look, unfortunately, you're probably not going to be able to make the money you want to make in this role right now. Um, and so I'm sorry, but I can't, I can't hire you for this. Um. But the people who are really good, I invite them to the next step. And the next step is a three-hour calling session in my office. And for the first hour, I teach them a script. 
and for the next two hours, they're actually making live outbound calls on a recorded line. So that does two things. It lets them test out the job, and it lets me really hear what they're about and whether they can do this job or not. So you put them on the phone for three hours? Um, I put them on the phone for two hours. The first hour is me teaching them a script. And then I put them on the phone for two hours, usually with like old website registrations or something. Oh, I got you. Okay. Yeah. So for two hours, they're calling people trying to ask for appointments. And uh, I mean, that, that tells you everything you need to know when you listen to that. Now, I have a quick question about that because let's say, you know, you got them on the phone calling leads. I mean, if these leads are coming into your site, I mean, what if the guy or the girl is just terrible on the phone, right? And like, I guess at a later a later time you'll have someone else call them and you know try to set it in a more streamlined fashion, right? Yeah, well, you know, Nick, I don't use new leads, right? I use old stuff. I don't okay. use I don't use anything that's good or incubating. I use you know just the old stuff that we okay. burn through when we have nothing better to do. Gotcha. So. All right, I got you. To try to like revive some old leads or maybe some leads that haven't really been responsive, some people that aren't actively working with someone already, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, stuff that people is not stuff that's not active. I got you. Okay. I just go to the archives and pull out a stack. <laughs> At random? Yeah. Nice. Uh, okay. Yeah. And it, at this point I've done it so many times that some of these old leads are like, you just called me last week. Yeah, what are you doing? Stop calling me. Yeah. Okay. I'm still not buying. Um, and then, so anybody that makes it through that calling session, then I actually bring them in and do a full interview with them. Okay. It must for be the KW people it's gotta out there. Be, it's got to be nerve-wracking for these people with that three-hour session like that, huh? Yeah, it is. And look, you know what? Here's the thing, man. Between the role play on the phone and the calling session, it's intentionally designed. I designed it this way because these people have zero real estate experience, right? They've never worked as a real estate agent. When they're role playing with me on the phone as a for sale by owner, they've never had to pitch real estate services. They've never had to, you know, stay on the phone with somebody and give them a good reason why they should meet with us. Um, yeah. So I want to I want to see what they do in that in that situation. And people either crack because they just don't have the auxiliary skills, you know the sales skills to do it, um, or they do really well, even though they have no idea what they're talking about, and, and you hear that. Awesome. Okay. No, I love that. So invite them into an interview, and uh, here's the – so when we do the call recording, when I, when I um, have them come in for the call sessions, I use a digital voice recorder, and you can pick these up at, you know, Staples or um, uh, Radio Shack or anything like that, or order them from Amazon. And uh, you see this ear pickup over here? I don't know if you yeah. can see my cursor. Yep. But uh, this goes goes into your ear, and it plugs into the top of the voice recorder. So when this is lying on the table, this picks up your voice that's coming out, you know, as you're talking. And then this earbud picks up the, the phone call coming through your cell phone or whatever. Uh, whatever you hear the caller saying. So that's a good way to record so, calls and to practice your scripts. Absolutely. You know, when I was being coached by Mike Ferry a long time ago, uh, my coach required me to do this for my own calls, and I had to send him my calls to look for him to listen to and review. So okay. now I just do it. I do it for the same thing for the big call session, and then I have a. I send these out. I send the big three hour, the big two hour call session. I send those out to be processed by somebody who chops out all the dead space and all the ringing so I can just hear the calls and listen to this person in action. Very nice. I like that. And it's probably, I mean, that little thing's very inexpensive. Yeah, I mean, as cheap as like 50 bucks. Yeah, that's not so bad. No. So, now we've gotten them through the uh, screening, right? And you're going to hire them. Oh my God, now what? What do I do with this person? Uh oh. Yeah. We've all, we've all been there, right? So talk about the training that we put them through. Uh, so, you know, our training is an office tour, expectations dialogue. You know, on day one, it's paperwork, stuff like that. Show them our contact management system, get them set up on email and, and the dialers. I always take the new ISAs out to lunch with the existing ones because I really want to foster a, a team atmosphere. 
Um, and then we do some of the Keller Williams processes like getting the book, things like that. So that I, you know, you can never motivate somebody unless you know what motivates them. Yeah. Um, you need to show them how to get what they want and you have first have to figure out what they want so that you can show them how to get it. Um, and this is important when we're talking about sales management, which is what you're doing. You're managing a salesperson. So day two, we go through the home buying process, mortgage and finance, buyer lead characteristics, buyer lead scripts, objection handlers, the whole nine, you know, the mindset of a home buyer. We yeah. go through seller training, the whole thing, the mindset of a seller, where they're at, you know, what the difficulties are. I mean, we all know that we're in a high emotion business. You know, emo people are very emotional, and so I want my inside sales agents to understand that. Then, day three, we get into different lead sources. So we're talking about expireds, talking about for sale by owners, talking about an expireds mindset, you know, talking about a FISBOs mindset why they're angry with you when you call them, why they're annoyed with you, why they don't want to talk to you. Making When you have a really deep understanding of that, it makes it a lot easier to have that phone call with them. Uh, then in the afternoon on day three, they actually start live calling, so now they're, they're into it, right? So basically the format is in the morning we learn a, a, a set of, or a lead type and practice it, learn the scripts, and then in the afternoon they start calling. Um, and then beyond day four, day five, after that first week, they're really on their own and they're, you know, they're working their leads, they own their leads, they're working through those. This is some of the training that I go through for my uh, inside sales agents. This just talks about the, how many people to a transaction that you'll generally do, how many appointments to a transaction, or not appointments, but this is actually, the way that I designed it was how many uh, contacts to an appointment. Okay. Uh, so, you know, going down. Go ahead, Nick. Uh, uh, okay. So, okay. I was gonna say. So this is okay. So a hundred phone calls will 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 on average lead you to one appointment if you're circle prospecting, prospecting, or sending out mail. Yeah. Or okay, I gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Internet leads around 50 to 1, FISBOs and expireds around 20 to 1, or you know, if you're a rock star, maybe less. Uh, but these are the things that I want to give them so that they understand um, what it's going to take. I want them to have the right mindset uh, about the lead sources that they're working and so that they don't get discouraged also. Okay, I got you. And then here, you so, know, I... I suppose to show you right there that you know, circle prospecting or calling expires is really a numbers game. When people say, you know, these numbers are terrible or no one's answering the phone or whatever, I mean, it really is a numbers game at the end of the day. Oh, absolutely. Everybody that I talk to who has um, inside sales departments that do circle prospecting, the general number is 100 to 1. My experience is 100 to 1. Um, and, you know, I know that when I was an individual agent, um, I would run anywhere between 18 and 20 contacts with an expired to get a solid appointment, a pre-qualified appointment. Wow, it's amazing because, like, you know, you'll hear agents like, oh, man, I made some calls today, and how many people did you call? I don't know, like 10. You know, you <laughs> didn't, I mean, you really have to make the calls in high volume. Yeah, you got you got to do it, man. Um, you know, especially with, with strangers, I just, you know, any, anybody who you don't know is a stranger, you got to talk to a lot of them in order to get a piece of business. That's just the way it is, and that's what this pyramid here explains also. For, what I tell them is um, for every 1,000 people you speak to, one of them is going to be ready now and wants to, willing to, uh, or are willing to speak to a salesperson. Um, Ten of them are going to be in the research phase and not ready for sales, right? A hundred of them may or may not be researching but have no sales pursuit at all, and a thousand of them just aren't going to be in the market at all. They're somewhere in that five to ten year yeah. uh, average moving moving gap, you know? Those are pretty, this is those also, are pretty, those are, I mean, these are pretty incredible numbers to look at here. I mean, it really is, you got to invest a lot of time and energy into this business. I think that's why a lot of people fail. I mean, I think that's why the failure rate is like 87%. Yeah, it's tough, man. And this really speaks to a database, right? Some of the most the most um, successful agents and teams that I know are a hundred percent database driven. Yeah, yeah. 
So when we're teaching, when we're um, uh, teaching the ISAs what a lead is um, and how to, so this this speaks to uh, the contact management inside our CRM, and we use Infusionsoft. So we need a way to classify things, right? So what we use is an A, B, or nurture, um, which I actually got from Tim Heil um, oh, wow, in okay. San Monreal. Yeah. Uh, but so, uh, yeah, an A lead is zero to 90 day time frame, or you're working to set an appointment with them. And for each one of these lead types, you must have a clear next step, complete contact info with their best phone, email, and, and home address if possible, and their motivation and availability or ability. Um, I think my graphic designer wrote availability instead of ability. Yeah, um, so then we, so we have we'll, a B. We'll just, we'll just blame the, yeah. the graphic designer now. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so the uh, B lead, 0 to 180 day time frame, again, same things. And then a nurture is going to be 180 day plus time frame. Um, so that that's how we qualify the leads inside our system. and what we have are, we have time frames that are set up in the system, so <coughs> an ISA can tag them as being ready in a year, or being ready in three months, or being ready in six months, and then they can also put them onto drip email campaigns. So the ISA is getting tasked over time according to the time frame that they've chosen for this person, yeah. um, so they don't have to worry about losing their leads in the contact management system, which is a pretty common problem. Losing them meaning I don't know when to follow up with you again, or I don't know what our next step is. So here's the typical work schedule for our inside sales agent. Um, are you still with me, Nick? I'm here, man. I'm here, man. Okay, I'm just checking in to make sure that uh, you know the sound is flowing and everything's good. No, this is good. We had a little hiccup earlier, but it's been really good since then. Okay, awesome. So typical work schedule. Um, I I don't micromanage them. Really, what I manage to is the um, is their outcomes or the results, right? I really manage to how many appointments, uh, first of all, how many closings did you have this month? How many appointments did you set this month? And how many of those appointments were actually conducted? And how many turned into a contract? That's really what I manage to. I don't manage to, did you show up at 8.55 or 9.05? Um, likewise with their daily schedule, I give them uh, a framework that I think works best, and then they are on their own to decide what leads they call, who they're following up with, and really manage their own pipeline. So the daily schedule is 30 minutes of role play and script practice, 30 minutes prep time to get ready, uh, two hours of lead gen or follow up, one hour lunch, and so you know after that two hours of lead gen, they're going to do their little administrative pieces if they need to, like notes and things like that, or um, change, you know. Uh, uh, moving appointments for an outside agent that they've assigned a, uh, an appointment to, whatever it is. Then they take a lunch, then two hours of lead gen, and then I really try to push them to take a break. Unfortunately, some of the, a lot of them don't. And then two more hours of lead gen follow up, and then they prepare and send an end of day report. So every single day at the end of the day, they put their numbers into a spreadsheet, and that's what we look at. Yeah. Um, I'll talk to the I'll talk about the coaching, which is over in this column on the right. That's what we talk about every Friday, is that, that spreadsheet. Uh, so the coaching piece, right? This is really important. So every Monday we have a one-hour team meeting, uh, where and, and we also do call review at that time. So any new things that we need to talk about, any things that are coming up, any difficulties that they're having, then we do a call review. And what I do is I have the inside sales agents choose two or three of their most difficult calls or, you know, pieces of, uh, of a call where they're having trouble closing or they're running into an objection that they're having trouble handling and we play those out loud as a group and I coach to them and we all we all talk about how to how to you know work around that or give advice on that kind of thing I also publish those on my Facebook group um, every week after for, for people to listen to them yeah uh, I think a lot of people like listening to those to hear the ISAs making their calls um, then we do it uh, every Tuesday is a 30 minute role play, Wednesday 30 minute role play, and then we have a one hour role play with the outside agents. Uh, again, Thursday role play, Friday role play, and on Fridays I do a 45 minute one on one with each ISA. We do it with, you know, in Keller Williams language, a cash talk, which basically just means it's a coaching session 
where we talk about any issues they're running into, um, things that they're stumbling with, where's their mindset at, how are their numbers doing, you know, how can we move them forward, or we celebrate their wins, and we celebrate where they're at, and we celebrate their closings. Um, so that's the weekly coaching. Okay, great. I love that. So here's the 30, 60, 90 day standards, right? So when you hire somebody, you're paying them a lot of money. How do you know whether or not they're going to work out? How do you know what to expect? I'm going to say this. These standards are very hard to meet, okay? Some of these standards in here are very hard to meet, and not all of our agents are meeting them, to be quite, to be 100% truthful with this. However, I had to establish some kind of standards to have them at least, so that we know what we're measuring to. Um, so what we look for is in the first 30 days that they can get to achieving 40, <laughs> contacts, per day. 40 contacts per day by the end of 30 days. And we count a contact as a decision maker, somebody who can tell you yes or no. So that's not wrong numbers, that's not somebody's sister, it's not the kid that picks up the phone, anything like that. It's a, it's a, it's a decision maker. Yeah. And uh, so in the second two weeks, we're looking for one appointment set per day, 10 appointments total and two appointments conducted. At the end of 60 days, we're still at 40 contacts a day, uh, 10 quality nurtures added per week, right? So they need to identify people who will or can do some business in the future with us and put them into the database. Uh, they need to have an average of five conducted appointments per week and 20 conducted appointments per month. And then at 90 days, again, we're at 40 contacts, 15 quality nurtures added, average of 10 conducted appointments per week, and 40 conducted appointments per month. So for us, and two closings. So for us, the golden, you know, um, the golden measure for us is trying to get, is having at least 40 contacts a day, and an ISA being able to produce 40 conducted appointments per month, which is not easy. That is definitely not any. Definitely yeah. not that's not easy. That's that's you're hustling, you're grinding, and you're really good at your administrative parts, right? Your notes, you're keeping your contacts updated, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You gotta, you know, these these guys are rock stars when they, when they hit that number, and it's it's really amazing. It's uh, humbling to watch them do it. So these are the this is that daily spreadsheet that I was talking about that we keep. Yeah. Um, I use Smartsheets. Yeah, Smartsheets. Great. And. Uh, Smart yeah, love it. Uh, built it out pretty easily. You know, it really is sort of like Excel on steroids. You know, it's like a cloud-based Excel. Um, so with what we are tracking are the daily contacts, the appointment set, their contacts to appointment set ratio, the appointments conducted, uh, contract signed, appointments to contract signed ratio, and the number of closings that they had for the month. So just to give an example, if you're setting 40 contacts per day, that's about 200 contacts a week. Um, that would at 200 contacts a week, that would be 10 appointments set per week, right? Yeah. And that would be 20, 20 contacts to an appointment set ratio. So that's an important number. So this, you know, two of the metrics that I really coach to would be how many contacts did you need to make in order to set an appointment? So that's one key piece that we can really coach on. And then the other one is how many appointments did you set and how many were actually conducted, right? What's that ratio? And then how many appointments got conducted to a contract being signed? So, so these are all the things that we're measuring. All uh, different things, uh, that, yeah, all the things that we're measuring sort of across the board. If you think about it from contacts to then appointments to then appointment conducted to then a contract signed, that's kind of the that's the funnel that you're looking at, right? Right, because it all it all it all trickles down from how many contacts a day and how many contacts a week and the and the level of appointment that they're kind of vetting for you, right? I mean, that yeah. that has, that has a big impact on um, the the rest of the funnel and all the way down. I mean, they're not really. Um, What's the word I'm looking for, Dale? You know, when you if they're not really like if they're not really vetting these appointments for you and making sure that these people are serious sellers or buyers, I mean, that's where you're gonna look at uh, the contract to appointment ratio, right? To see where you, what you can do with that. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
So I, I, yeah, definitely. It comes up in two places. It comes up in appointments set to appointments conducted. So I set these appointments. Did these people actually, did this human being really show up to talk to a salesperson? Um, so that's the first measure. And then yes, how many appointments did you have to go on to get these contracts signed, to get a listing, to get a buyer working with you? And, you know, in full transparency that when you, so I run an inside sales team and the inside sales team has to set appointments for the outside sales team. That becomes another, you know, that connection there is very critical in, in how that team works together because you're going from one person to another and you might have differing um, sales skills. You might have differing, differing um, objection handling skills or closing skills, right? Yeah. So, so for us, that, that is a big part of what we have to focus on is, um, you know, are they setting good appointments? Are they setting enough good appointments? And are those appointments being closed to contracts and going out to settlement? You know, Nick, if you were hiring an inside sales agent just for you, then you know you're the guy that's going on the appointment and there's probably nobody better than you to go on the appointment. So you don't have to worry about whether or not you've got the closing skills, right? Yeah. Um, so when you expand that, it becomes becomes a more complicated problem. So just a quick thing about personality styles, right? You know, a lot of people have the opinion that they will only hire D's or high D's or high I's for an inside sales position. Um, at this point, I've worked with people who are just about every personality style, and what I can tell you is that every single personality style has its pluses and they have their minuses. Every single person, no matter what personality style or what, you know, what makeup they are, is going to have things that they struggle with that you have to coach them on in order for them to approve, improve, and you won't find that out until they start doing it. Does that make sense? It totally makes sense. I mean, I've heard, you know, some personality types are better in the ISA role. Like, I'm a high I, and I've heard that it's probably not the best role for me um, because I'm, I'm yeah, not. Yeah, and even with I, everybody, you know, what I, what, what I hear a lot is people want high Ds. Yeah, um, I'm a real high I, and I'm a complete disaster in terms of organization. So, <laughs> so while I can make the phone calls, that's probably about all I could do. I mean, I would not – I'm terrible at putting my database into, like, certain follow-up systems. That's why I have – like, my wife is – she's kind of like my transaction coordinator. She's just really good at that. So I leave that in her hands. So that's why phone calls for me, I could do that part, but then I need someone to do the other part. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Um, so that's, you know, when when I, when I people ask me, like, what's the best um, personality profile? You know the best personality profile is the person who can do the job the best. That That's the, right, that's the best oh, one. I love um, that. And what I'm finding a lot of times are the S's. People that are high S's, they just keep doing it, man. They just keep grinding. They just they just keep going. Uh, it's it's awesome. Tell? That's amazing, dude. I didn't know that. Why do you oh, think that? Oh, Kristen's here. <laughs> oh, hey. Hey, a, no, um, okay, oh. Because those people, they just do what they just do what you tell them. They just do what they're supposed to do and they keep doing it and they like the consistency. So if you can get an S that wants to win, if you can get an S that has some D, you know, that, that wants to set an appointment, then then you're golden. Interesting. So yeah. And one thing I found with eyes, sorry about this, Nick, but Eyes, uh, in a lot of eyes that I've worked with, they, they really struggle. First of all, they don't like to be rejected um, in the experience that I've had. And two, they tend to struggle with really purposeful language, right? Yeah, I'm really, I'm very of, sensitive. I'm very sensitive, Dale. I'm in the wrong profession. <laughs> <laughs> Tristan will tell you. My feelings get hurt. It's nice. Really hey, mine do too, to be yeah. honest with you. But see, I'm a D, so I just get aggressive when my feelings get hurt. That's the problem. <laughs> you think that I'd be good at rejection because I, when I was a kid, I was an actor, and I used to go on auditions, and I would get rejected all the time from, from like, commercials and stuff. But I just, you know, I just got that soft spot in my heart, you know? Yeah. Oh. I hear you, man. <laughs> I was 
sound effects, but he uh, didn't do it. Why don't you do that right now? Because I don't want to mess up the live feed. I'm sorry, Dale. Go ahead. We digress. That's uh, all right, man. I'm gonna move forward. So, so what I'm saying is, I don't have a, I don't have a perfect uh, personality profile that I look for. That's why I do so much skill testing of people um, before I hire them. So what I hear a lot of common call issues when I'm doing coaching, right? They're either too aggressive or they're too nice or they're not mirroring and matching. Or the ISA doesn't believe in what they're selling. That, that's a huge one, man. When you get to burnout and you don't believe what you're selling, you don't believe that your company is the best company to list your house with or your company is the best company to buy a house with, you know, that ISA is not going to sell anything to anybody. So you may need to step back and you know re get them to recommit or get them reconvinced about the product. Um, taking rejection personally, unclear language, and, and similar to non-purposeful language, um, or arguing rather than approving objections. You know that's definitely a big one there too. Um, talking over the prospect, not asking enough rapport building questions, closing too quickly, and talking too much or not asking enough questions. These are all common coaching issues that I, I see. So let's talk about compensation, right? We have base salary. Um, so what we do is a base salary. Um, so for us, it's a base salary of 30000 And then we do a bonus of 5 or 10% of the gross commission income on a sale. What I've also seen would be a base salary and then some kind of, you know, um, dollar bonus not tied to the GCI, just sort of a flat bonus. Um, I've seen you know, $250 to $350 depending on the sale price of the property. And then also you know, I know people who hire part-time ISA is just doing a flat hourly rate. Yeah, um, the so common leverage structure is difficult for a lot of people. And let me ask you a quick question. Do you, do you suggest that your ISAs be licensed? Um, I do suggest that they be licensed. You know, we, and especially in the, I, here's what I would do. So in the state of Pennsylvania, the law says if you're going to have a substantive conversation with somebody regarding real estate, then you need to uh, have them licensed. Yeah, that's true. Right? So I, I can't really argue around that. So that's something that, um, that I, I think people should do. So I really think that you just have to look into your local laws. Give me, okay. give me one second. I want to make sure my car is not getting towed. Uh oh. I hope his car is not getting towed. Stand by, people. Stand by. You good, Dale? Sorry about that, guys. You got, you got to move your car. I'm good. I'm good. All right, so. The, uh, yeah, I would recommend getting them licensed, man. Um, you know, especially if your state law is any way, if, if you can in any way interpret by your state law that you need to do that, then I would recommend doing it. What we tell what we tell our ISAs is that we get them licensed, and uh, within the first, um, if they, if as long as they stay with us for the first year, we will pay for the expenses. If they, um, you know, if they leave us, then we recoup that. So, um, I, I gotcha. All right. just talking about, go ahead. No, 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 I was just listening to, you know, compensation. Compensation. Cool. Um, so, talking about leverage, right? So, here's a couple of ways that you can make this happen. Uh, you can split an ISA with other agents. Uh, you can get a vendor to contribute, possibly, you know, if you have relationships like that. Um, and just talking about leverage in general, you know, using the KW, for, for the KW agents out there, sorry for any non-KW agents, but, you know, using training like Ignite, <laughs> Bold, uh, language of sales classes, which, uh, you know, I've been through twice now and they're fantastic. Um, and you can also outsource to your hiring. So there's a couple of different companies that will hire for you or at least recruit for you. Um, you can outsource the training and outsource coaching or you can outsource your inside sales agent entirely. Um, so I know people that are using like my out desk. Um, I haven't used any overseas um, ISAs personally. You know, all of our inside sales agents are local and they are you know native English speakers. So they so they work right there with. You. Yeah, they're all in there with me, and you know I personally feel like I really need them here so that I can help coach them. I can be with them. You know, I I can I would just find it difficult to manage them 
from a distance. Um, I haven't done it, but I mean, if I had to, I, I probably could. So, so let any me questions? Ask you, so you you do lead gen for how many different expansion teams? So we have, um, let's see, three, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven offices. Okay. At this point, eleven offices. And so, how many ISAs are making phone calls for you guys? Right now, we have four. Oh, okay. And are all the offices in the same same time zone, or are they different time zones? Uh, well, the UK obviously different time oh, zone. Yeah, the UK is uh, yeah, just the UK is in a different time zone. Um, everything else is on Eastern time. Okay, oh, I got you. So, so what's like? What's the breakdown? Are they in different? So, how many different states are you in? So we one, two, three, four different states right okay. now. So, like, is there a certain breakdown of when they call certain states, or is it all just kind of like bundled together? How does that work when they're doing those phone calls? So what we've done is we've time blocked, right? So uh, depending on where we have more agents or more leads coming in, we'll give more time blocks to that area. Yeah. And then we we just do time blocks by by office, right? So um, down, you know, in one this two hour time block, they're going to be calling Florida. This two hour time block, they're going to be calling one of our offices in Pennsylvania. And then you know the next time block, they're going to be calling Jersey. So that's how we work it out. Oh, I love that. Okay. Well, hey, so yeah, far, you know, it's just don't come up here to Montclair, okay, buddy? <laughs> if, you uh, do, if, you do, if you do, you're calling for, for my team anyway. So yeah, there we go, man. Maybe you mean you got to talk about it. Oh, hey. Um, so yeah. yeah. Um, so let's. I'm going to move on to. Unless you guys have other questions, I'm going to talk about uh, this bonus for you guys. Oh, so th let's talk about this. So this is your new training package, right? So why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so you know what I discovered after um, teaching, so I, you know, teach some classes in some Keller Williams offices, and um, I realized that, you know, really all of this starts from the recruiting, right? You really got to have a good foundation for screening and recruiting people um, before you get even into the training and all that kind of stuff. So what I did was I packaged up my best practices for recruiting people. That whole piece that I talked about around um, you know, receiving resumes, uh, sending out an email, getting them to do the voicemail, setting up a voicemail box, using a calendar, calendar apps, things like that, and then how to role play with them. So I packaged all of that stuff up into a, a tutorial, a how-to for ISA recruiting. And what, you know, what's included in that, it's a five-step recruiting process. Uh, that takes you up to the point where you would do, you know, you get them through the calling session and you decide that this really, this person is really the one I'm going to, you know, have a final interview with and hire. So what's included in that package would be the various apps and tools that I use, like voice mailbox setup, appointment scheduling apps. Um, I talk about the voice recorder that, that I showed in this slide here. Yeah. Um, I include the scripts and the emails, the inside sales agent job ad example, a voicemail script to use, recruiting email templates, and the FISBO scripts that I use for the agent and the recruiter. And then I also include live recordings of good and bad role plays so that people know what, what, they're, what to listen for, and ex live recordings of good and bad call sessions too. So ah, okay. all that's packaged. Yeah, all that's packaged up into a download. And uh, so I'm running a special right now. Normally it's 250 bucks. And so for all you lab coat people out there, uh, yeah. um, if you use the code lab coat rocks, uh, you can get a discount for the next 48 hours to $149. <coughs> this is awesome. I'm going to that is available. Yeah, go ahead. So it's, so it's, I'm going to post. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, that's available at smartinsidesales.com. So we save 100 bucks for the next 48 hours, and we just kind of get more of what you talked about here videos, scripts, recordings, That's like a, that looks like a really good package to me. Yeah, exactly. So this is what it is. Basically everything that you would need to run your own recruiting uh, to find yourself an ISA to really, so that you can get through, because here's, here's what happens. Here's what I used to do, right? You post 
post an ad, you start getting some resumes, um, you, you try to read the resumes, you try to get through them, you have some phone calls with people, yeah, yeah, I'll be great, I'll be great. Um, and because it's such a hassle to do this anyway, you're like, um, I'm tired of this recruiting part, I'm tired of reading resumes, I'm just going to hire this person. And then they stink, right? Yeah. That's tough. So you need to get a lot of resumes, you need to put these people through a certain process where you actually test their skills. And that would be getting them all the way through this call session and in order to do that on a high, to, to get that many people through and have it not take up all of your time when you need to be selling houses, yeah. uh, this is the streamlined process to do that. It sounds great. I'm def I mean, you know I'm going to get it. Yeah, great. Um, so that's the URL. And uh, yeah, just use that code, Lab Code Rocks. Yeah, I'm going to post it up later. I'm going to post it up today and let everyone know, and we'll replay the webinar in the group. And uh, no, this is fantastic. And we'll also blast it out to um, you know, everyone on the Lab Code Agents database. Um, I mean, I've definitely learned a heck of a lot. So I'm feeling good about it. Awesome. Great, man. Where are you, that Dale? That's good. I, uh, I turned off. Oh, here we go. There, I'm back. <laughs> cool. All right. Awesome. No, that was uh, that was very informative, and I think that a lot of people definitely they need that. Hiring ISAs is one of the biggest challenges, I think, and it can also be one of the most expensive investments if it goes wrong. Yeah, absolutely. So I think you know, if I left anybody with anything, it would be the recruiting part. The screening part is hugely important. You know, if you find the person with the right skills from the outset, it's going to work out so much better for you. Yeah. And then being really diligent about the coaching and the managing of them. You know, you're you two are in it together, right? So you need to stick together with this thing. And um, the one place where I see people fail a lot is with the absentee management, right? Okay. You bring them in, you're like, hey, it's fantastic, we're great, I love you for a day, and then they disappear, right? The manager disappears, and this ISA is just like, what do I do? What am I gonna do here? Yeah. That's so funny. Well, listen, I thought this was great, um, and we appreciate you coming on, and I'm going to obviously replay the video later, and we'll, we'll throw it around and let everyone see it, and you share it with your people, I'll share it with mine. And, um, awesome. Yeah, I thought it was fantastic, so thank you very much for taking an hour of your day. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Dale. We'll see, you we'll see you later, buddy. Awesome. Thanks, guys.